Ever wondered what makes great songs stand out? It's the ability to evoke clear feelings. Today, we'll be diving into the world of music production and mixing to discover how we can create emotional pieces. So as a music producer, your primary role is to create emotions in music. And for mixing engineers, you need to understand your role as well in the music. So what exactly is a mixing engineer's role? It's not just about balance and intelligibility. While these are very important for a mix, the biggest thing is enhancing that emotional impact, capturing the emotional context of the song. But on this channel, we are acting as both producers and mixing engineers, as we are the ones making the track and we are mixing the track. So how can we wear these both hats, balance these both hats simultaneously? How can we convey and enhance the emotions that we are infusing into our song? Let's talk about sound selection. Choosing the right sounds and chords is crucial. Let's say we want to create a nostalgic, not so happy, but not so sad either track, like this track here, Lovely by Signicity, yours truly. In my case, in this case, I explore using the lower register of the piano. So let's open up the piano here and let's take a listen. So, I don't have things going all the way up here in, 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 eight, in octave 7 or 8 or 6 or 5. I'm using, I'm using the lower register because what, lives, what, what, what do we characterize the lower register as? Warmth. And if I'm trying to convey a nostalgic feel, I want warmth. Secondly, when I think of nostalgia, I think of simpler times. As a result, the chords as well as how everything is laid out, is not too complex. I don't have super fast things going on. Very simple. My tempo is slow and the piano line is slow. This piano melody just repeats for most of the song. Listen. Now, Let's go to, let's add some other layers here to continue the song and enhance our emotions. So I start with these guitars. I'll play them all together and then separately. Okay, so let's look at each individual layer. Notice when I pick the guitar tone, I'm not doing something super harsh or anything like that. It's something smooth, subtle, nice. To create a wider effect, I have some of the guitars panned to the left and to the right. This just makes the guitar itself sound large. Now, we have a bit of masking going on between the piano and the guitar. This is fine in my case because I would like the piano to be super subtle, just supporting the backbone of the piece in this area. It had its time to shine in the beginning. Now it's the guitar's time to shine. This goes in the background. Now we have the bass to support it. Simple things, nothing is going too crazy, not too much energy, right? Remember we be nostalgic. Quick thing about texture. We wanna add some texture to enhance the emotional feel. I have this tambourine in the mix. So 
super subtle gets the job done. Now, in general, when you think of my arrangement of this song, in terms of how I'm distributing the frequencies, my bass, really low. The guitar, the lowest note is above all of this. It's an octave above. So already I'm creating space in this mix. So I don't have anything really overlapping. My pianos and my guitars are overlapping, which is why the masking is happening, but it's fine because I don't need it to come forward. But when I do need it to come forward in section B, in this section two here, guess what? Higher register, simple. Right? So all of these things you need to be thinking about before you even think about EQ or compression or any of these things. Because in real life, when a band's playing, right? Like acoustically, our brains are doing the EQ and they, the musicians themselves, are balancing by volume level, right? So let's treat our music the same. Now, we need to create some variety, which I alluded to in the B section. In this A section, we have the simple melody of... For the second half of this A section, I introduce another guitar. Which is this right here. Right? And my drums are very simple. This B section. We spoke about the high pianos. I'm basically making the bass faster for some more movement because we're in a different section. So. Actually, I'm not just doing that. I'm introducing a new note. The third one. Right? Create, create some variety somewhere. Additionally, the person I collabed with, Snazzy, is adding this nice whistle. Right? But we still want to keep this familiar, okay? We don't want to go so far that we're not in the realms of the track. We still want to remain nostalgic, right? Because we're telling a story. So, something stays, something is here. The guitars. Just a little faster following the bass line right and this melody we've been hearing it I chop it and I just repeat it in context and then when the song comes back in the repeat of the A section A2 A prime we want to have some new things but still the main idea comes back notice this this percussion that gets added in the B section flows into this next a repeat of the A section. So we have a nice flow, a nice journey from start to finish. Something new in the piano. Another new thing, a guitar harmony that comes in before the last half of our song. Now Snazzy added these wonderful pads in the background to just support the track. And then to end the track, 
piano intro, but the bass included. So there you have it. We haven't even talked about EQ yet, and there's not much EQ or compression or anything going on in this track. A lot of it is very bare bones, and that's because I was so particular about my sound selection. Okay? Sound selection is key. It is key. So, there you have it. Crafting an emotional track. Remember, the emotions come first in the music. So pick your sounds carefully. Once you do that, things will fall into place. So always remember, it's easy to get mucked up in the technicalities of things, but we are making music. Okay? So have fun, pour your emotions into it, and tune in next time. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.